All right, today we're gonna to talk about low power variable optics and where to zero uh, your optic at. I was running low power variable optics years ago, back before they were really popular. Uh, I ran them um, during entry operations on our SWAT team, as well as in overwatch positions from um, an armored vehicle. And even back then, everyone always debated where you should zero your LPVO. 50 yards or 100 yards. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna shoot um, a rifle with LPVO on it with a 100 yard zero and a 50 yard zero. We're gonna shoot at 100 yards, 50 yards, 25 yards, and 10 yards and record the uh, point of impacts. I'm gonna have the same point of aim the entire time. So you're gonna see uh, your bullet drop or bullet rise and then I'll show you the results and you can make your decision on where you need to zero your LPVO. So let's talk about what I'll be shooting today. I've got a Steiner, one to four power. It is the one to four by 24 military. Uh, they've got a etched reticle in there uh, with a BDC and it also has adjustable turrets. Now there's a lot we can talk about in LPVOs and we can go into the radicals, um, the benefit of having an etched radical, the pros and cons and everything like that. But that's not what this video is about. This video is just about where to zero your LPVO. So this is a 11.5 inch SBR with a Gemtech Halo can on it. So I'm gonna verify my zero and then uh, once I get my zero verified, I'm gonna shoot the drills. So I will shoot with the 100 yard zero first, and then I'll adjust my zero for a 50 yard zero and um, shoot the same course of fire with that. And then I'll show you the results. All right, I just confirmed my zero at 100. So let's shoot this, see what we get. All right, we're gonna move to 50 yards. All right, we're here at 50 yards. Shoot three more with my 100 yard zero. All right, we're gonna move to 25. All right, here we are at 25. Now we're gonna move to uh, 10 yards. All right, here we are at 10 yards. All right, let's go take a look. Here is our target. I think those were my three from the 100. And then this was 50 and that one there. 25 and 10. So as a reference, this is a two and three quarter inch circle. So with 100 yard zero, if I'm shooting, depending on what I'm shooting at, with a center hold, because my hold was here in the center on at every distance. The bullet drop is not that significant uh, as I'm getting closer. Um, so if I'm shooting a center mass 
uh, shot, I'm just going to hold center. If I'm shooting a um, critical shot, I'm going to have to know this drop here and hold higher in my target to get the round where I want it to go. So I'm going to take a few minutes, adjust my zero for the um, 50 yard zero, and then I'll confirm my 50 yard zero on a target over here and then shoot the same thing again. Okay, I've got re-zeroed, got my 50 yard zero on here. I'm gonna shoot the same course, we'll see what happens. All right, moving to 50. Go to 25. Go to 10. All right, let's go take a look. All right, let's take a look at our 50 yard target. So you can see the two targets side by side. Left, 100 yard zero. Right is our 50 yard zero. So, this is my 100 yard group. This is the 50 yard group. This is a 25 yard group. And this is the 10 yard group. So, let's put a tape measure on it. Our extreme spread is a little over four inches with a 50 yard zero. The 100 yard zero is about two and seven eighths is the extreme spread. So I'm gonna measure this a little more detail and write it down. So hopefully um, this helps you a little bit. Uh, it's kind of clear as mud because it's gonna boil down a personal preference on um, where you want a zero. Me, I prefer a 100 yard zero. Uh, my radical is set up for a 100 yard zero and I really don't have a lot more offset that I have to allow for than if I was running irons. Uh, on a 50 yard zero, I've got a whole lot more um, that I have to think about as far as my rise and fall of my bullet. Under stress, intelligence goes down. So what you need to do is find out what works for you. Find out, uh, go out and shoot your weapon system. Keep in mind, this is 11 and a half inch gun. A 16 inch gun, you may see something totally different. Uh, also depending on your optic. So I know some of you may have been hoping for a clear answer here, but this is not a clear answer. It's um, operator and equipment preference. So if you haven't done this, go out and shoot your weapon system. Try this um, little test out to give you concrete data on where your impact is gonna be at what distance. If you wanna learn more about running a LPVO, we have a three-day LE only class, and then we also have a two-day class that's open to anyone, LE or civilian. So be sure and check out our website for our upcoming classes, and I will probably be putting some more information up, more videos about LPVOs, and some other things to take into consideration if you decide to run one.